The next topic is when this, then that. In the past, in the USA, when Marines were hit by shrapnel, they used to come off the field whining, moaning, complaining, and cringing with pain. Then the Marines discovered a new technique, and the soldiers were trained accordingly. The next round of Marines that were hit by shrapnel came off the field quietly, not complaining, absolutely at peace mentally, and they seemed to be mentally tough. What was the difference between what happened to the Marines who were hit by shrapnel in the first scenario and the Marines who were hit by shrapnel in the second scenario? One change took place in the teaching behavior, and that is the when this, then that technique. In other words, the Marines were told when you get hit by shrapnel, you can expect to feel this, 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 and this. So when they were eventually hit by shrapnel, they knew what to expect. There was no surprise, and they came off the field quietly. Now, using this when this, then that technique, allow me to show you how it can work in medicine. Say you put a drip up in a patient's arm, and then you walk away. And that night, that drip tissues. In other words, the um, fluid comes out of the vein and goes under the skin. The next morning, you come to that patient. That patient is aggressive and unhappy because there was an unexpected complication which occurred. However, if you pre-warned the patient and you said, listen sir, ma'am, I'm putting up a drip. This is what the drip is for. This is what can go wrong with that drip. Then when something does eventually go wrong, there is no problems because they were aware of these complications. And the next morning you have a happy patient. So too with mentalist martial art. When this, then that. When someone holds a gun to your head, then you can expect this, 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 and this. When someone is about to jump out of a window, you can expect this, 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 and this. When you are involved in a potential rape situation, you can expect this, 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 and this. If you are not pre-psyched and pre-warned of these situations, when you find yourself unexpectedly in one of these situations, you will be shocked and paralyzed, and you will not be able to think on your feet. Now this involves confronting unpleasant situations in your mind's eye. However, it's not the end of the world. When you are at gym, on the treadmill, or when you're having a cappuccino with your friends, you can brainstorm these ideas amongst yourselves. So you may ask yourself, what should you do in a rape situation? Should you fight? Should you lie there? What should you do? My advice is to do neither of them. Neither fight nor lie there. If you fight, you're gonna get injured because the aggressor is possibly bigger and stronger than yourself. If you lie there, you're gonna get infected or pregnant. My advice is to misdirect yourself. Fake an epileptic attack. Go to YouTube, watch epileptic attacks. Soil yourself, go into status epilepticus. No assailant, no matter how crazed, would want to rape a victim who looks like that. And I've actually given this talk many places over the country, and women have told me their stories as to how they've avoided potential rape situations. Misdirection works because it's unexpected and it's not thought of. And I cannot tell you the misdirection techniques myself because then they'll be out there and then they won't be effective. This is why magicians are so successful, because their stuff is secret. So you have to come up with your own misdirection technique that works. 